Welcome to The Run, BEN's panel covering the 2016 presidential race. I'm Jonathan Funk. I'm pleased to welcome our guests from right to left, Todd Seavey and Anders Kaur, Jonathan Leaf and Melody Brooks. Todd is a libertarian writer and TV producer. He is the author of the forthcoming book, Libertarianism for Beginners. Anders specializes in nuclear weapons security and other aspects of foreign policy. He worked for five years in military intelligence in Europe, Asia, and Afghanistan. He holds a PhD from Harvard University. Jonathan Leaf is a playwright nominated for Best Off-Broadway Play in 2006. He contributes regularly to the Weekly Standard and the New Criterion. And Melody Brooks is director of the New Perspectives Theatre Company, an award-winning multiracial ensemble committed to theatre as an agent of social change. Todd, Anders, Jonathan, Melody, thanks for being with us. In 1782, on a tour of America from France, Hector Saint-Jean de Crevca said, Here individuals of all nations are melted into a new race of men a fitting celebration of our new nation of immigrants. In 2013, Representative Steve King of Iowa updated that sentiment slightly. He said that for every child of immigrants, uh, illegal immigrants, quote, who's a valedictorian, there's another hundred out there who weigh 130 pounds and they've got calves the size of cantaloupes because they're hauling 75 pounds of marijuana across the desert. And they say we have no statesmen left. Here's the run. If Social Security is the so-called third rail of American politics, immigration has become its electric fence. Most agree there are an estimated 11 million immigrants here illegally, but there is no agreement about how to address their status. Many candidates are, I'll say it, on the fence about it. Republican Senator Marco Rubio says he could support a path to citizenship, but only after border security has been strengthened. I guess he plans to be for it once he's done being against it. For their part, those on the left who favor some form of amnesty bristle at the use of the term amnesty. But they got a boost this year from President Obama, who used executive orders to achieve reforms that the Republican Congress refused to pass. The litigation's coming soon to a courtroom near you. This week, former Secretary Clinton staked her claim even to the left of President Obama. What exactly did the president do? Is it legal or isn't it? And was Hillary right to double down on it in Nevada this week? Jonathan? Uh, it's clearly illegal. And uh, if we need an authority on that, we have a guy who uh, was former constitutional law professor by the name of Barack Obama, who repeatedly said before making the decision for the executive amnesty that it was clearly illegal. He said he that over and over again. He said that. He, he, did sa not say it was he said it about half a dozen times before cameras, before audiences. In fact, he was specifically asked, could you do this by executive order? And he said, no, that's unconstitutional. Uh, what he said. And Hillary Clinton is somebody who should know better. She finished second in her class in, at uh, the most difficult law school to get into the country, Yale Law School. Um, so the interesting question is to what degree does she actually believe that she's doing the right thing? One thing I think we should keep in mind about Hillary Clinton is that she's been involved in politics longer than most voters have been alive. You know, she worked on the 64 Goldwater race. She was uh, one of the leaders of the Republican Club at Wellesley. Uh, she was involved with the uh, investigative, co investigating committee uh, for the House impeachment trials in uh, uh, the Nixon impeachment trials in 1973 and 1974. Um, you know, she's been, and then of course she assisted her husband as the first lady of Arkansas and uh, guided education reform in Arkansas. Uh, then she put together the uh, failed uh, plan for, uh, or, or not implemented plan for um, health care reform when she was first lady. You know, she's been involved in politics for an incredibly long time, over 50 years. So is she just appealing to the base, doing what, what liberals always call, uh, talking about conservatives, uh, throwing out the red meat, or does she actually think this is the right thing to do? I would assume that it, she's just throwing out the red meat, but if she does, if she is, that's what she's doing, it, it, it's not really helpful. She may also be thinking about, look, there's a real possibility she's going to be running against somebody like Rubio or Cruz, who potentially can appeal to uh, Hispanic voters, which is the base or a, an important base of the Democratic Party. So she may be trying to outflank them by, by giving herself an issue. Effective defense, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, Melody, you objected no, to the No, I do object because what Obama said was that he wasn't a king and that um, the, the, the people were asking him to change the law. And he said he couldn't change the law as the president. But every president uses executive orders, and George W. Bush used many, many more than Obama has even thought about using. Um, and his also, for many of the things that people were urging Obama to do, and I'm not a huge Obama fan, I, there's many things I'm very disappointed with him about, but that he, his, his stated goal was that the, that the law would change and that it, therefore it would last, as opposed to execu using executive orders that go away when, or can go away when there's a new president. Um, but the issue of immigration reform has been on the table 
for 20 years or more, that the, there's a large community that are not the left that support immigration reform, businesses, the Chamber of Commerce. Um, and I don't think Hillary is uh, throwing red meat to the base at all. I think it makes sense. There are 11 million people here. And they're not all uh, Hispanic, by the way, Latino, Mexican, South American. They come from all over the world. So. Um, About two thirds. And, and, and most of them come legally and they just overstay right. their visas. So this idea that, 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 that we have, you know, the border's been strengthened under Obama tenfold. You know, all the money that's been put there, the size of the border patrol has increased and also their, uh, you know, sort of ma illegal treatment of, of people coming across the border. So these notions that, they, that, that, that we don't have a strong border on the South, and it's always the Mexicans. It's not anybody else in the world. So I think she's absolutely believes what she says. Um, Is it, did she believe what she said a year ago, two years ago, five years ago, when she said that uh, they should not, that illegal immigrants should not have driver's licenses and last summer no, when she, she first said, said that they should. She supported it when she was a senator so in New York State. So she flipped twice. Well, she did, so did Jeb Bush. Jeb Bush, interestingly, supported giving illegal um, immigrants driver's licenses in Florida because it makes sense. Isn't it better to get people registered and you know who they are and, and ha have some, being able to pass a driver's test if they're going to be driving anyway? So, um, the, she was really pressured from her party and from, you know, my biggest problem with Hillary is the people that are advising her, not Hillary herself. Okay, uh, a politician flip-flops and uh, response to pressure. Any surprise here? Uh, how much do you really hold it against her, Andrew? It's a bit of an end run around Congress, I mean, what Obama has done. So, you know, if you support democracy, you want to see a president who's consistent with the, the wishes of Congress to some extent. Okay, Todd, we're going to get to Rand Paul and his plan in a moment, but as far as it concerns Hillary, how acceptable is her move toward your position on more liberal immigration? Uh, it, it's better It's better than nothing, um, although it is worth pointing out that uh, that doesn't mean, mean her motives are good. Ultimately, as a utilitarian and a consequentialist, I don't care what her motives are, so she can be a complete psychopath, uh, and it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but for analytical purposes, I think we should assume uh, that rather than her motives being a newfound sense of uh, humanitarian goodwill, it's probably the case that back in the 90s, uh, her husband, who was more in favor of border enforcement and criticized illegal immigration, uh, probably calculated that the Democrats' best strategic bet at that time was to keep unions happy. And despite unions often talking like progressives, they're very wary of competing non-unionized labor coming in from overseas. Uh, but 20 years later, uh, I think uh, Hillary Clinton probably calculates that unions have waned in power and a lot of the Democrats' strength comes from simply appealing to everybody uh, who's not part of the white plurality in the country. So if uh, it looks like Obama suggests you know, maybe you could get uh, virtually every other ethnic group uh, to vote in overwhelming numbers for Democrats, then you want as many immigrants and, and new voters as possible. And, and I should say, there aren't that many people on the right who are actually anti-immigration. So in a weird and complicated way... There aren't many on the right who are anti-immigration. That's right. Um, in a somewhat complicated way that rarely gets stated by pundits, the real struggle and the reason you don't hear that many true anti-immigration voices in Congress uh, is between the Republicans and corporations kind of liking the idea of lots of uh, immigrant labor coming in uh, that will be uh, workers and will be legal so the companies don't have to worry about uh, you know immigration swooping in and arresting everyone, um, but that doesn't necessarily translate uh, into voters or say welfare recipients. The Democrats want more voters as opposed to uh, you know, w wanting uh, new workers for corporations. Uh, so it's really a question of whether you let people in on work visas or you let them into the uh, to the voting booth. That's the that's the real struggle. Now, what's the overlap between the voters and potential voters that Hillary is addressing with these policies? And the workers, particularly the higher end workers, the the H one B visa type uh, workers that the Chamber of Commerce is concerned about increasing quotas for. Well, I think uh, two there, are they two pretty separate audiences, or is there a significant uh, overlap in that that Venn diagram? Uh, I, would, I would say they're they are separate audiences, except to the extent that the Republicans uh, shoot themselves in the foot by sounding as if they're across the board immigration. In which case, you will get even uh, you know uh, rich 
East Asian immigrants uh, voting for the Democrats just because they think, like, oh, it sounds like the Democrats are sort of the uh, more open-minded, uh, ethnically diverse party. I guess I should vote for them, even if they explicitly want, say, affirmative action quotas that work against my ethnic group, that sort of thing. Uh, so uh, the best thing I think Republicans could do would be to make uh, a sort of non-ethnic, across-the-board free market appeal and, and say, okay, we, we've got all these immigrants coming in. Um, remind them all that the reason they're here is because you can make money here. Everyone has an interest in capitalism and property rights. That would be the best formula for picking up lots of Republican go votes going forward. Uh, and instead, if they sound like they're futilely standing against the tide and saying, we don't really like the newcomers, the newcomers will say, okay, fine, you don't like us, we don't like you, we'll vote for the Democrats. Mm. Futile stand against the tide. Jonathan? Oh, I was just to say, one of the really weird uh, things about this election is that the two Republican candidates, one of them not, I don't know if it's 100% clear that he's going to run, but the two Republican candidates who are emphatically uh, against any sort of Im immigration reform and seem to be, you know, like uh, terrified of this flood of illegals coming in are both uh, Ted Cruz and Bobby Jindal, right. who were uh, both the, the children of immigrants. It's very, in fact, one of them, it's not even clear he's qualified to run for U.S. president. Ted Cruz, there's some question. You know, he seems he was a Canadian citizen at one point. He was born in Canada. There's some question about whether he's actually a legitimate candidate. But it's, it's very strange. And, and that's actually another strange thing he brings up in this race, which is that the more liberal position on immigration, by and large, seems to be the, the uh, being espoused by the Democratic candidates. But the party that seemed, you would, based on their candidates, you would assume was the party of immigrants, is the Republican Party. Uh, you've got Jeb Bush is married to an immigrant. Uh, you've got Jindal, you've got Cruz, you've got Rubio, all children of immigrants. Uh, so it's, it's just kind of a weird um, um, well, split. Well, Democrats from, are for diversity, expect. generally. They're for open-mindedness. And, and, and we are. We don't and, see and that, that in the Republicans that, that Todd quite managed as to much. cram every piece of Republican paranoia, or certainly right-wing paranoia, into his speech about it's about the vote. It's not that people actually care about 11 million people who are here, most of whom pay taxes of some sort. At a minimum, they pay employment taxes. They're paying sales taxes. Many of them are property owners. Um, Often Social Security tax. Yes, all, and, and which they're then not allowed to uh, to collect it because they have no way of legally getting it. And um, the, the it's not an end run around Congress to use executive orders because every president has done it. And it's only when it's a Democrat that does it, when we have a dysfunctional Congress that refuses to do anything. Um, Can you give a comparable well, you can't example just make on the Republican side? You can't just make up laws. Uh, he's not president. making up a law. The, yeah, the he's president the law and is the, very clear. No. The president and the Department of Justice have discretion about what laws they, uh, to what degree they want to implement the laws, or the how much more resources. Yes, exactly. Limited, you can't just and make that, that was the, the law. first executive order, which was the Dream Act, which was children who were brought here for, for, with no choice, who have grown up here, are essentially American, that are allowed to, if they're in college, if they're in the military. I can't remember what the third one is. High school, um, complete high school. Yeah, that they can that they can get you know an extent that they're they're not. That they will not be deported if they're discovered. Yeah, you can be um, a Marine, but uh, you can still be deported. If right, you, you know. exactly. I mean, th there's things that just make no sense. I don't remember um, the exact uh, executive orders that George Bush signed, but I just know that there were a lot of them because in people have done that comparison. There, there is a duty literally of Literally the numbers of executive orders. The president orders shall take care that the laws be faithfully right. executed. Bush did, mm -hmm. I do know one of the executive orders Bush did, which was an end run around Congress, which was to give federal funding to faith-based institutions and creating his faith-based, the office of faith-based whatever. In, Where did the in, money come the, from that wasn't appropriated for that purpose? Um, it came, I'm not quite sure where it came from, whatever the discretionary, whatever discretionary funding he could You sure that wasn't that. just approved by a Republican Congress? No, it was not. It was actually not approved by a Republican Congress because they weren't quite as crazy back then. It was just barely. And there was really a sense of, we have a separation of church and state in this country it, and it they was, were willing to, to, to stick by that. It was just barely a retweaking of programs that already existed uh, back under Bill Clinton. Uh, it doesn't Bush, matter. Congress Bush, didn't approve of Bush, it, and Bush, Bush signed an executive order because he wanted but, it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, something Bush, to look up next. I, I think I think you can cite through the course of American history many instances where presidents did things which they did not have uh, clear uh, legal authority for. For instance, uh, Franklin Roosevelt, before the outbreak of the Second World War, told uh, American uh, Army Air Corps. Uh, officers that if they went and they uh, served in the uh, Flying Tigers in China that they would be given pensions. <laughs> now, he clearly had no uh, power mm -hmm. under the law to do that. Um, Packing the that, court. Pa well, that, that he tried to do. But that doesn't justify it. And in fact, I don't know if people have noticed, but there's a big controversy now where people are saying we should take Andrew, I think rightly, we should take Andrew Jackson off the $20 bill. Why? Mm -hmm. Because he did something that was completely unconstitutional. The Supreme Court uh, uh, 
paying attention to property rights, said you can't just throw the Cherokees out of the state of Georgia. And he said, Justice Marshall has made his ruling. Now he may enforce it, basically, mm -hmm. meaning, mm -hmm. you know, I don't care. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, the Indians were forced out. Thousands died on their way to Oklahoma. You know, we know this terrible, or we hope people know this terrible story. And people are saying, now we should take Jackson off the $20 bill. No, that's quite right. That's not an argument for doing the same yeah. wrong things. And it's not an argument that the, the, the woman but who perhaps would replace her should be wrong. Hillary Clinton and by ignoring the law as well. Wrong. It's not clear that it's wrong. If you believe in constitutional government, then you think that the president should obey the law, and then he takes an that oath to do right. that. I, and I, I don't know if you take oath There are so many but. issues in which the executive branch does things that I think are truly outside the pale, like executing American citizens without a warrant, without due process, because they're you know somewhere else, and, they've, and the president alone has decided that they deserve to die. Is there a difference between the president taking actions that have not been explicitly authorized and the president failing to do things that have been explicitly mandated by Congress? No, I don't. That's not mandated by Congress. I mean, there's there is there, there, there is, are laws on the books no, regarding immigration. Right, but they're not the they're every every. Uh, Department of the federal government, once the laws are passed, the Congress doesn't set the way in which laws are implemented. This is across the board. Well, it is up to the to the to that committee, to the people that run that department, to it, to decide how to implement the laws. And it's only when the the Republicans don't like what somebody's doing that they want to scream and say it's illegal. Let's talk about those right? policies. They're all happy that he killed Anwar al-Awlaki without any right. due process. So there's no complaint about that on the right. There's plenty of complaint about that on the left because there's also been other Americans killed. But again, it's like it's what you like and what you don't like, and that's the that's the real problem with it. The policies that uh, that the president has put forth and the the priorities he has set. Uh, are they really that unreasonable, targeting uh, illegal immigrants who are here doing really bad things as opposed to the, the immigrants who are here illegally and building lives, building families, paying their taxes? Is that really so bad? I, I personally like the policy of being more open to immigrants uh, from abroad, um, but at the same time, I would disagree with Melody um, that if it's the law, you should, the president has to follow the law. It sounds to me like what you're it's saying not, no, is not. that, let me finish, it sounds to me like what you're saying is that when you agree with the policy, it's okay for the president to break the law. When you disagree with the policy, it's not okay. That leads, breaking the law that or leads failing to, to enforce the law. But it's not breaking things. the law, and that's not what I'm saying. I am saying that the Congress and the people, uh, you know, when they like what a president does via executive order, then it's okay. I'm not talking about myself. When they don't like it, then it's against the law. But there's no indication that it's against the law. Yeah, yes, there is. There it's, isn't. It's, no, it's, it's because the way in which law no, it's, no, pretty clear it's that, not. It's pretty clear that he... Uh, arbitrarily right. and capriciously arbitrary. decided right. that he had the right not to deport people. The law clearly said it had Obama to be deported. Obama has deported more people than any than That's George Bush and and, and it, is, it, is it truly capricious to to prioritize the limited federal resources right. on getting people out of the country who have committed crimes over those who are children and well, here not by uh, cause of their own? Well, there's no question that under Bush, for instance, there was no serious effort of, uh, or very little serious effort of enforcement uh, with regard to many types of deportation. But that's not the same thing as actually announcing a policy and just saying, I, as president, am now going to ignore existing laws. They're different things. And I'm not, by the, by the way, saying by this that, that uh, Obama is the worst president in American history. We, I mean, we were just talking, as I just mentioned, we have a much worse case of abuse of executive order in the example of Andrew Jackson. But it's not trivial. And that someone who knows as much about the law as Hillary Clinton is advocating this, it says some bad things. At least it says that she's willing to engage in a little bit of demagoguery. Everybody's uh, made, made a lot of the fact that this announcement came within 24 hours of the New York Times poll, finding that her trustworthiness level is at 25%. Um, as much as this may shore up and guarantee uh, her support among Latinos, as much as it may take away uh, that vote from some of the Latino uh, uh, candidates on the Republican side, what does it do to her in the general to have flip-flopped so consistently on this issue and at a time when her credibility is already at an all-time low. I think uh, virtually no voters are paying attention to any details of any policies of any candidates. Uh, votes are determined almost exclusively by name recognition. Uh, so the longer the Republican field remains divided and the longer people keep hearing Hillary, Hillary, the more likely they'll remember that name vaguely when they stumble mindlessly into the voting booth looking for a way to pretend they're participants in an intelligent democracy. And when they see that brand, they'll recognize it uh, and uh, flip the lever and 
not have the slightest idea what that entails policy-wise. Even if 75% of the zombies wander in there thinking only one thing about her, and it's that <laughs> I cannot trust her. Uh, they, they, they don't seem to care. And when, and when politicians uh, are, are brazenly immoral, it often just makes voters think, oh, they're tough. They make, they make the real decisions, kind of like Berlusconi. He's willing to have orgies and, and lie. Okay, there we are. I, and, and, and virtually in, in debt as country. But uh, can, I, can, I, uh, can I get back to this issue of the ethics sure. of uh, the decision not to deport people who, uh, I mean, there, there seems to be a question about, you know, we, we operate under the idea that we're a nation of laws rather than of men. And that's what we object to about the president's um, executive order. But I think there's even an ethical issue with regard to um, his decision. And that's, you know, I, recently I was out in Los Angeles for some, some theater business. And I went out to dinner uh, with a couple uh, and the husband, who are from France. And they've been here legally for a long period of time. They're soon going to have to leave. Uh, and they've been working legally here for a long time. And then you've got people who potentially could get U.S. citizenship who didn't do anything legally. Uh, and, you know, there does seem to be a little bit of an ethical question. So I think we have to, we also have to, on one hand, we have to think about a practical question. Anyone who I think is sane, and obviously I have a, a, a particular perspective, anyone who's sane is not going to say we can't, we can't just throw out 11 million people. Well, what's, on what's the other also hand, the selection effect of bringing, of bringing in people who are breaking the law? Right, you're going to get a you're going to get a nation like Australia, a nation. Okay, Australia. Oh, Australia yeah. is a great country. Things, right? Zombies well, I'm all for Australia but, too. But, but when <laughs> when uh, the Obama administration and the Department of Justice <clears throat> declined to support the Defense of Marriage Act, that was not when, when who when who declined Obama and yeah. the, his Department of mm -hmm. Justice. They mm -hmm. declined to to defend the Defense of Marriage Act. Marriage Act, right? They refused so that the, the Supreme Court actually struck it down. And there were a lot of people that said, oh, it's his job, he has to defend it. But it wasn't illegal. The Supreme Court also threw out and said that, that the Defense of Marriage Act was unconstitutional. And so there, there there's that. there wasn't a question of that, enforcement. That was a question of where the Attorney General. It was General absolutely a question of enforcement. It was absolutely. And the, the Republican Congress wanted to go to court to sue over it, and they declined to defend it, and the, and the Supreme Court said it's not constitutional anyway. So no one went around screaming. There were a few people, a few, you know, a few of the zombies on the right, because they just say whatever's told to them. Uh, oh, that's, all, that's illegal, that's illegal. But it was a waste. It was an utter waste. And, and, and Boehner and the Republicans in Congress ended up spending several million dollars to try to defend it in an, another waste of taxpayer dollars. Um, well, every, so every again, court case has like two it, sides, and one case, one side always loses. Right, but I'm just saying that there was, there was no, no one has, you know, gone around saying that that was illegal. The Department of Justice had the discretion to do that. And well, it's isn't the same it because with that law was found unconstitutional, and he turned out to be on the right side of that, and it was no, good judgment, and this well, is a bad judgment? I don't think it's a bad judgment in the least. I don't find but it a bad judgment. But doesn't the Attorney judgment. General have the right to determine whether he's going to fire, file an amicus brief, and on which side in every case? I don't know. Some people would argue that they don't. Some people would argue that it's just their job to defend every single uh, bit of legislation that Congress passes. So that was the argument on the right with the Defense the, of Marriage the, Act. The Attorney General always has a right to, to either file or not file an amicus brief in a case. Right. But and on, on the right, side, there were many people that felt that was not true. Many to debates, the extent many that arguments. Congress stepped in and did it themselves. Many sides to all of these arguments. We're going to hear a side we don't talk about very much, the view from Mexico. Because, yes, they've got a stake in this debate as well. Stick with the run on DEN, where jobs come first.